The Divine Comedy, as translated by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, courtesy of Project Gutenberg. Inferno, Canto 1. Midway upon the journey of our life, I found myself within a forest dark, for the straightforward pathway had been lost. Ah oh, me, how hard a thing it is to say. What was this forced, savage, rough and stern, which in the very thought renews the fear? So bitter is it, death is little more. But of the good to treat, which there I found, speak will I of the other things I saw there. I cannot well repeat how there I entered. So full was I of slumber at the moment in which I had abandoned the true way. But after I had reached a mountain's foot, at that point where the valley terminated, which had with consternation pierced my heart, upward I looked, and I beheld its shoulders, vested already with that planet's rays which leadeth others right by every road. Then was the fear a little quieted that in my heart's lake had endured throughout the night which I had passed so piteously. And even as he who with distressful breath forth issued from the sea upon the shore turns to the water perilous and gazes, so did my soul, that still was fleeing onward, turn itself back to re-behold the pass which never yet a living person left. After my weary body I had rested, the way resumed I on the desert slope, so that the firm foot ever was the lower. And lo! Almost where the ascent began, a panther, light and swift exceedingly, which with a spotted skin was covered o'er, and never moved she from before my face, nay, rather did impede so much my way, that many times I to return had turned. The time was the beginning of the morning, and up the sun was mounting with those stars that with him were, what time the love divine, at first in motion, set those beauteous things, so were to me occasion of good hope, the variegated skin of that wild beast, the hour of time and the delicious season, but not so much that I did not give me fear a lion's aspect which appeared to me. He seemed as if against me he were coming with head uplifted and with ravenous hunger, so that it seemed the air was afraid of him, and a she-wolf, that with all hungerings seemed to be laden in her meagerness and many folk had caused to live forlorn, she brought upon me so much heaviness with the affright that from her aspect came that I the hope relinquished of the height. And as he is who willingly acquires, and the time comes that causes him to lose, who weeps in all his thoughts and is despondent, in such made me that beast without in peace, which, coming on against me by degrees, thrust me back thither where the sun is silent. While I was rushing downward to the lowland, before mine eyes did one present himself, who seemed from long-continued silence hoarse. When I beheld him in the desert vast, Have pity on me, unto him I cried, Whichever thou art, or shade, or real man. He answered me, Not man, man once I was, And both my parents were of Lombardy, And Mantuans by country, both of them. Subulio was I born, though it was late, and lived at Rome under the good Augustus during the time of false and lying gods. A poet was I, and I sang that just son of Anchises, who came forth from Troy after that Ilion the superb was burned. But thou, why goest thou back to such annoyance? Why climbst thou not the Mount Delectable, which is the source and cause of every joy? Now, art thou that Virgilius that and that fountain which spreads abroad so wide a river of speech? I made response to him with bashful forehead. Oh, of the other poets' honor and light, uh, avail me the long study and great love that have impelled me to explore thy volume. Thou art my master and my author, thou. Thou art alone the one from whom I took the beautiful style that has done honor to me. Behold, the beast for which I have turned back. Do thou protect me from her famous sage, for she doth make my veins and pulses tremble. Thee it behooves to take another road, responded he when he beheld me weeping, if from this savage place thou wouldst escape, because this beast at which thou criest out suffers not any one to pass her way, but so doth harass him that she destroys him. And as a nature so malign and ruthless that never doth she glut her greedy will, and after food is hungrier than before. Many the animals with whom she weds, and more shall they be still, 
until the greyhound comes who shall make her perish in her pain. He shall not feed on either earth or pelf, but upon wisdom, and on love and virtue. Twixt Feltro and Feltro shall his nation be. Of that low Italy shall he be the savior, on whose account the maid Camilla died, Euryalus, Turnus, Nisus of their wounds. Through every city shall he hunt her down, until he shall have driven her back to hell, there from whence envy first did let her loose. Therefore I think and judge it for thy best, thou follow me, and I will be thy guide, and lead thee hence through the eternal place, where thou shalt hear the desperate lamentations, shalt see the ancient spirits disconsolate, who cry out each one for the second death, and thou shalt see those who contented are within the fire, because they hope to come, whither it may be, to the blessed people, to whom, then, if thou wishest to ascend, a soul shall be for that than I more worthy. With her at my departure I will leave thee, because that emperor who reigns above, in that I was rebellious to his law, wills that through me none come into his city. He governs everywhere, and there he reigns. There is his city and his lofty throne. O oh, happy he, whom thereto he elects. And I to him, Poet, I thee entreat, by that same God whom thou didst never know, so that I may escape this woe and worse, thou wouldst conduct me there, where thou hast said, that I may see the portal of St. Peter, and those thou makest so disconsolate. Then he moved on, and I behind him followed.